example from that side. So when I say good morning, you can say it back really loud. This is a time you can be loud in church. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, nicely done. Noise in church is great. Okay, any birthdays since the last time I saw you? Any real, true birthdays? Anybody? Yeah? Happy birthday. You can pick one. There you go. Happy birthday. Okay. Birthday's out of the way. Now we're just going to do something kind of weird. Cups? Yeah, cups. But not for drinking. No. I'm stacking cups. Making a tower? I'm making a tower. Made a tower. We're making the big cup. It'll fall down. I'm going to make it fall down with this. Do you think I can do that? Yeah. Do you think you're really brave? Yeah. Do you like to, there you go. You want to try something? S cover your eyes. Ready? That didn't even scare me. Good. Want to try it again? Let's see. Keep your eyes closed. Woo! That's kind of weird, huh? It is loud. Do you want to see what it feels like? Ready? Ready? Woo! It even made your hair move. That's kind of weird, huh? Let's see. You think it's going to knock these over? Yeah. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> Woo! Just in case you don't get the full effect, I'll bring it down here. Ready? <laughs> Woo! That's just fun. I like this. That's why I bought it. Ready? <laughs> what do you mean it didn't do anything? It does things. It's weird, right? Okay, you can't see it coming, but you know something's going to happen. It's kind of weird that all of a sudden this burst of air comes out from this pur purple thing. I know, and now you start kind of covering, duck and cover, duck and cover. Or if you watch the lion guard, panic and run, panic and run. Do none of you watch the lion guard? Okay, panic and run. Who does that? Zebra. The zebras, that's right. That was my favorite line from that entire show. Panic and run, panic and run. And then all the zebras kind of fly all over the place. Okay, so... This just collects air and pushes it out. You can't see it coming. It's a little weird feeling, but it does some work. And I brought this in today because this is just a toy that I have at home because I collect things like this, just for moments like this with children's messages. <laughs> it's fun. But, and it's also fun to, you know, kind of go up to Declan and get him in the face. He, he knows. He was here first service. He said, he's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's great. God sometimes acts a little weird like that. Like we don't exactly know what to expect. God kind of shows up and does things. We're like, where did that come from? Kind of like a burst of air. Woo! You just don't know when it's going to come. I know, it's kind of weird, huh? You can't see it. You, but you know, oh, let's see if we can move that green thing back there. Oh, I even moved the banner. It's a little weird how things can just blow and change. And that's kind of how God works sometimes. We don't necessarily see him coming. But maybe there's somebody on the playground that you go, I never thought I would like that person. But you kind of become friends. Or maybe there was somebody that you thought was really scary and you realize maybe they're not quite so scary. Or maybe you begin to realize that God does things that I didn't expect. And it might seem kind of weird sometimes. You want to get a cup? I'm going to get you if you get a cup. I'm going to get you. Go ahead. That's kind of how God works. I even got it a cup. You did get the cup. You want to get a cup? I'm going to get you. So, here's what I want you to think about. Sometimes God shows up when we don't even expect it, and strange things happen. But it's not strange when it's God doing it. It's called a miracle. This isn't a miracle. But when God shows up, it is a miracle. This is just called science. It does have a target. So I can pull this up, and I can aim. Did it make it to you? Nope. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so let's have a prayer and think about how God shows up. Fold your hands. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing up, even sometimes, when it seems weird. Amen. Are you going to keep those cups? Okay, you can keep them. Head back to your seats. Cups are a free gift.
Anyone that wants to use it after church, just kind of feel free. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we continue and kind of finish up this sermon series today, um, the last of the Pray for One sermons, not that we're going to forget about Pray for One, but today is, is the last in the sermon series. Next week we'll start something a bit different. We have three Sundays left after today in Epiphany, and then we'll be into Lent. This Pray for One has been all about how do we make ourselves available to God? How do we realize that we are a resource for God? Not that he actually needs us, but that we have the opportunity to reflect him. Kind of what the, the gospel, Matthew 5, talked about today, that we are reflecting the light of Christ in the world and that we are the salt of the earth. And with that idea of how do we carry what we know about Jesus into the world, we look at, again, the, the um, epistle, 1 Corinthians the second chapter, where Paul is writing to the church at Corinth to say, the wisdom that you think would come from God, it's different than what you would expect. It's the power of God, which may seem even a little weird. In the book, Pray for One, about this church up in Vermont, one of the things the pastor talks about is that when weird shows up, God things happen happen. And it's not weird, it's just the way God works. The, the congregation up there in Vermont experienced in three years 117% growth. So doubled plus a little bit in three years. The idea of pray for one isn't to double in three years. The idea of pray for one is to let yourselves be available for God to do what God does. But what the pastor said is, of the 117% that started coming to church, they were all kinds of weird. Because you see, they weren't groomed properly for church. There was the guy who brought the beer in in the back of the church and was drinking beer during church. There was the woman who overdosed with heroin in the bathroom. And moms and daughters were in there when it happened. All of a sudden, when you open your doors for how God works, it's not the people that you think are groomed for church that come to Jesus. It is anybody that comes to Jesus. And all of a sudden, it's not about, well, clean yourself up and then come in. It's about come in, and we're going to walk with you. And all kinds of weird begin to happen because God works in the weird. And are you ready? Because when it's God working, it's not weird. It's called God working. It may just not be what we would expect because we come to church for the proper things, for the good things, for the right things, for the salutary things. And God's like, yeah, but church is not about that. Church is about walking with people through their lives. The normal, the weird, just life itself. That 117% wasn't the cookie-cutter Christian that came from someplace else. They were human beings that came in to find Jesus. Human beings that had all different backgrounds and all different experiences, and yet were children of God. And that's exactly what Pray for One begins to do for our hearts, is to say, am I ready for that 117%? Am I ready for whomever God may bring into my life? Are we ready for whomever God may bring into this building? Because it's not the people that we think need it, it's the people that God knows need it that he begins to connect through pray for one. And so every day when your feet hit that ground and you're praying for one, you're not just praying for the one that's out there or a one that's out there, it's also a prayer for you to say, help me be ready for the one because that one may be weird or unexpected. And God's going to go, that's exactly where I work, is in the unexpected and the unexplained. And wow, I didn't see that coming. And Paul lays that out a little bit in his letter to the Corinthians. He says, in the demonstration of the Spirit and a power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 
You see, church does church when it doesn't rest in the wisdom of what we think is right. Church is church when it rests in the wisdom and the power of God, which sometimes is just all out weird. God, what are you doing? I don't get this. And you know what? The good news is you don't always have to because you're not God. He gets it. He's driving the verbs. He's leading the ship. And we have to say, it may not make sense to me. It doesn't have to. If that's exactly the intersection where God has placed you and someone else, or someone else and this congregation. Paul goes on to say, we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. You see, God works in weird. God's mightiest act, God's grandest display of strength was in a 33-year-old naked man hanging on a cross, dying. If that's not weird, I don't know what is. Because every human instinct would say, well, he got it wrong. Well, he's a loser. Well, he's not at all what we expected. And yet, right there, in complete humility, with outstretched arms, God shows up and says, that's where my work is happening. Right there. It's not clean. It's not even actually clothed. It's not really contained. But that's where I work. And that's the wisdom of God. It makes no sense to us, nor did it to the Jews or the Greeks or the Romans at the time. Here's what makes logic sense, logical sense. And God's like, I, your logic doesn't really impress me because, you know, I'm God, and my folly is even better than your wisdom. So just hang with me and go with me and let whatever seems weird, but from me, let it happen. Paul goes on to say, it's because God has prepared things before time for those he loves. So as we think about this pray for one idea, there may very well be intersections in your life, conversations yet to come that God has prepared that you don't know about and you don't need to today, but as you pray for one, you are prepared for that which God has prepared already. And so it's simply saying, I am available. And let's just share some weirdness together. And that's kind of what today, after church, the elder co community care gathering this week and then the one next week, that's kind of what the point is. So if you um, have an, an elder care group that's meeting today, we're going to be in the A room following this. If you can't make it next week but you're here today, you're welcome. Um, if you're not here this week, you wouldn't be hearing this, but you could come next week. Um, it's just open to whenever you can get here. If you don't have an elder care group, don't stress, just come. Because what we want to do is we want to share weird. And we want to say, you know what? These things happen. I have conversations I didn't expect. We want to hear from people to say, I didn't see that coming, but God showed up. Because the more we know we're in this together, the less weird it is and the more God gets the glory. So we're going to talk about how God shows up and has been showing up in the lives of people and what that means for each of us, not just as, as members or visitors of, of, of grace, but as people of God who every day put their feet on the ground and, Lord willing, pray for one. And what would that look like in your life and the challenges and the joys and, and all of that? So please come to one of the community gatherings. There's even some food, and it's all free. It's good stuff. Because God has this prepared for us. He has meetings and conversations and interactions already prepared. So it's not like, wow, that was a coincidence. No, it's a God thing. And it's a God plan. And it's a God purpose. And do we let God's way roll out before us? Paul goes on to say that we have received the Spirit who is from God that we might understand these things freely given to us by God. 
First and foremost, he's talking about that which is given to you, a bloody man dying on a cross, which seems like foolishness to the rest of the world. Your salvation given to you by God. And that in some of the strangest places, with the most obscure people, God shows up. And are we allowing God to show up where we least expect it? Which is a little odd to say. Because if he's God, and he is everywhere, and he is all-knowing, and is all-powerful, why are we ever surprised when he shows up? Because he's already there. Well, I didn't expect God to be there. Let me tell you, he was there before you got there. He was just waiting for you to get there. You can't go someplace or talk to someone or be in a situation where God isn't already there. He didn't beat him there ever. He's already there. And so you go with God into conversations. You go with God into situations. You go with God into opportunities. You walk away and go, that was weird, and God's like, really? It was just me. It was just me. And you just noticed. And that's what's weird, is that God does the things that we least expect. And he works in ways that we would never think about. But that's why he's God and we're not. And that's kind of the end of that idea of the pray for one. Are we ready for what it might do? No. No. I can't even predict what it might do. But what I can be ready for is, God, help me show up when you're there. I can't walk away from here and say, I am prepared for the pray for one, and I'm prepared for the 117%. I am prepared. All I can say is today... Lord, I will be faithful in what you do. Help me be faithful. Help me every day be ready for what the next chapter of my conversation with someone might bring. Pray for one. Always include yourself. Are you ready for whom God brings to you? And are you ready for what God brings to you? And are you ready for where God brings you? That's what Pray for One is all about. It changes how you see your life. Because you see, God's already showing up. The air is already here. But when God pulls back that trigger and lets go with a little burst, things happen. And that's what Pray for One is all about. Letting the bursts happen and not stopping them. We are a people, I would pray, that each day of our journey become more and more comfortable with letting God demonstrate his power. Let God bring the 117%, whoever they are, from wherever they come, with whatever they have, here, so that we can love them and embrace them and share Jesus with them. Are we ready? Are you ever ready for weird? Oh, good. (laughs) Okay, well, Tony is. What I pray every day is, Lord, don't let me run from the weird. I don't purposely seek out weird. Michelle might differ. No, I don't. I don't. But the prayer is, don't let me run from the weird. When I'm in a situation going, every bone in my body says, what are you doing? Let the Spirit say, you're right where God has placed you. You're right where God has placed you. Be faithful. Because there are times I want to go, ah, what am I doing? And yet if God opens that door, may my heart be ready. Behind door number one, door number two, door, door number three, I don't know. Pray for one says, God, I am, I am available. Bolster me up so that when your weird ways begin to unfold, I can be a part of it. 
because there's 117% of something that isn't here now or doesn't know the love of Jesus that need to know. So let's be ready for all kinds of weird. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may that peace keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life ever